Hello and welcome to episode 46 of the Smash Ultimate Modding Workshop. In this episode, I'll be going over three things. One, basic information on the differences between Smash Line 1 and 2. Two, how to give a character another projectile with Smash Line 2. And three, how to put a character's effects onto another character. Firstly, what's the deal with Smash Line 2? Smash Line 2's biggest benefit is the ability to clone projectiles and transplant effects but it also comes with a new way of defining scripts, which I think works better in the long run. Note that function hooks, what was taught in episode 25, don't even use Smashline in the first place, so anything like this won't need to be changed at all. Also, global fighter frames technically don't work, at least when I'm making this video. What you can do instead is just make a fighter frame for a specific fighter, and then just attach it to every single fighter manually, which isn't too hard to do. Of course, Smash Line 2 is still in a very early phase when I'm making this video, so to see what works and what doesn't, you can look at the issues page on the Smash Line 2 wiki for a general idea. Oh, and note that Smash Line 1 and 2 fundamentally aren't compatible. To use Smash Line 2, you'll need to download the latest releases of the Smash Line plugin and replace the Smash Line hook in your functions folder with this. What does a basic mod look like in Smash Line 2? Well, WooBoy's template plugin has already been updated for Smashline 2, and what I've decided to do for mine is create a branch. So to clone my blank Smashline 1 plugin, you can just type git clone, and then the link to the repo. And for Smashline 2, git clone the link, dash bsl2. So if we pop over to that branch real quick, you can see that the lib.rs file stays completely unchanged between Smashline 1 and 2. And then the only difference with the cargo.toml file will just be this line right here. This is the link for Smashline 2, and this is the one for Smashline 1. As for the mod.rs file, this top section can stay unchanged. But when we get down to the actual script callbacks, they're pretty different. Just how scripts are defined and called is what's changed. All of your actual code can stay the same. For all scripts, this top line with the pound symbol can be removed, because the actual information on which script is being replaced will be down here instead. All you need for the scripts up here is unsafe extern cfn, and then the name of the function, which, reminder, can be anything that you want it to be. For ACMD scripts, you know, your game, effect, sound, expression, you can use agent and mutt l2c agent base as an argument for the function, and for fighter frames or statuses, you can use fighter and mutt l2c fighter common. As for the install function, agent new is where you put the name of the agent you're editing. You know, Mario for Mario, Kamui for Corin, Luigi underscore fireball for Luigi's fireball. To use a game function, you can do .gameACMD, the name of the ACMD script, i.e. game underscore attack 11, or game underscore attack rn. This is the name of the script. That would be right here in a Smashline 1 function. Effect works the exact same way, but with .effectACMD, and you can probably assume how sound and expression work too. For fighter frames, you can do dot .online main, as in the name of the function. For statuses, this first argument is the status type, such as main, exec, init, etc. This one is the actual status, like special underscore n, attack underscore air, or special underscore low underscore attack. And the last one, guess what? It's the function name you defined. The last thing you need is this dot .install bit, which just says, yeah, um, install all these. If you want a written version of pretty much everything I've just said, I'll have the Smashline 2 migration guide linked in the description. Next up, what about cloning projectiles? Well, a few disclaimers first. Not every projectile can be cloned, and not every character can get a new projectile. Smashline 2 is still in its infancy, so maybe by the time you're watching this, that's not true. But for the foreseeable future, just understand that not everything works, like Snake not being able to get new projectiles, and Cloud's Blade Beam not being able to be cloned. Either way, the process for cloning a projectile is a little bit of a long one, so big thanks to Phaseo Ganon for helping with this. 
I'm gonna make a brand new Smashline 2 plugin just to demonstrate. Of course, you can either clone my repository or Ruboy's one, the choice is up to you. Step 1, clone the article with this line of code. Smashline clone underscore weapon original owner original name new owner new name use or original. For this example, I'll be putting link sword beam onto Sheik. So what I'll do is link sword beam and this has to be a different name. So I'm just going to call it light beam. For the use original argument, true means that all of the weapon's original code is used, and for false, that means that you have to write all the code yourself. I don't want this to be an hour long video of me writing status scripts, so I'm just going to put true. Of course, if you put true, you can still edit the code. Doing false just makes the article more of a blank space, if you think, if you will. Step 2, define a Lua const for the new projectile. For this example, the const would be fighter chic generate article light beam. This const is going to need a value though. Article constants are always defined as just numbers. So to see which articles a character already has, we can look at this page, which will be linked in the description. If we search for chic, we can see that she has four other articles already, which should have the values 0 cross 0, 0 cross 1, 0 cross 2, and 0 cross 3. We now know that if we want to add an article, for chic at least, it needs to be instantiated with the next value in line, as pub const fighter chic generate article light beam i32 equals 0 cross 4. The next step is to copy over all of the model and motion files of the projectile to the recipient, and, because that's file edition, define the files in the config.json. Opening Arc Explorer and going to link model, we can see that there's not actually a sword beam model folder. But if we check motion, sword beam does have a motion folder. Only thing in it is motion list, so we'll extract it. And for later, I'm gonna grab links param vl.prc as well. And while I'm here, I'm gonna grab the one for chic as well. You'll see why I do all this later. I'll just copy over the motion list real quick. So episode 46, fighter, chic, motion, we'll rename sword beam to light beam, C00, motion list. And we'll make sure to copy that over to all of the other slots as well. Rename that to C01. CO2, CO3, you get the idea. And I'll create the config.json. We'll go to episode 46, new text document, and just config.json. And we'll throw that into Notepad. And that's the config.json done for now. Next up, the vl.prc. Most projectiles have an entry in vl.prc, which I have no clue if I've actually covered before, so... It's a file that contains a bunch of parameters, usually for stuff like collision and the properties of special moves. Link sword beam has an entry in vl, so I'll show you how to add an entry. What you'll need is paramxml, a link to download it will be in the description. I also have a batch file, which can automate typing in the commands to convert PRC files. What you can do once you have paramxml is copy over the link and the chic vl.prc files. I'm gonna make sure both of these stay in, and then we can rename this one to vlchic, and this one to vllink. Doesn't matter what you rename them, I just want to stay organized. And then I can drag them both onto the convert.bat file. 
and you'll see it'll convert both of them to XML files. I'm going to copy them both over to VS Code. And in Link's file, I'm going to Control F and find any instances of Sword Beam. You'll see we have these two, Param Sword Beam and Map Collision Sword Beam. I'm going to copy the entirety of both of these structures over to a Sheik's file. You can put it pretty much anywhere, but I'm going to put it at the bottom, and I would recommend doing that too. Not the very bottom, note that you'll have this one closing structure tag. So the last param, usually param private, and then we'll start at the ones we've added. So a list, param sword beam, a structure, map collision sword beam. You might only get one structure, you might have three, it just depends on which article you've cloned. Hey, you might even have zero. Next, we're going to change the name of the article to the new one. So for me, of course, that is param light beam, and then map collision light beam. And I'll save. I'll take Sheik's edited VL, drag it back onto the bat, and you'll see that the original VL, Sheik, got updated. To make sure that it worked right, I'm going to open it in PRC Editor. And you can see under, underneath param private, we have some parameters, and then we have the map collision stuff. The last step in cloning a projectile is simply to summon it. You know, actually put the projectile out there in the world. What I'll do is have it spawn during Bouncing Fish. So I'm going to go to Wooboy Script Dump. I'm going to search for Sheik. And I'm just going to grab... I'll do Special Low Landing. Special Low Landing uh, has a blank game script, so it doesn't show up in there. So we can get rid of both of those, all that, that there. Do Sheik Game Special Low Landing. Uh, for fighter name, it'll be Sheik, of course. And now we have to put the line in there that will summon this projectile. I'm actually just going to copy my own code. Episode 22, I think it is. Yeah, article module generate article is what we need. We'll throw that in there. We'll take this, copy it into here. Uh, we don't need the asterisk because we don't need to dereference. And this should work. You know, as long as one, she can take a projectile, and two, Link sword beam can actually be cloned. This episode was unscripted, by the way, so I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Uh, actually, before I test it, I'm going to grab the is execute statement as well, just to be safe. So I'll open this into CMD and hit it with the cargo skyline build release. And once that's done, I'll put it in Smash and see if it works. Testing in Smash now, we can see that the projectile spawns, but you can't see it. This is because it uses one of Mario's effects, which Chrome doesn't have access to. This is where part 3 comes in. Transplanting effects. Lucky for us, the process for transplanting effects is super easy. There's only really two steps to it. We can go into Arc Explorer, go to Effect, we're going to be putting Mithra's effects onto Chrome, so we'll go to Fighter, Elite, and then we'll just dump Effect, Elite, dot Effect. And then we'll copy it over to Effect, Fighter, Chrome, Transplant, Elite, and then Elite Effect, dot Effect. Last step, we need to add this section to our config.json. Fighter, Chrome, Common, Effect, Fighter, Chrome, Transplant, Elite, Effect, Elite, dot Effect. This makes it so Chrome can use almost any of Mithra's effects now. So what I've done is made it so Chrome's light beam now has Elite Lay Dust effect. And what I've also done is just changed the hit effect to magic so that you don't get like the fire effects when it hits a player. And to demonstrate some other effects, I've also added Mithra's Rapid Jab Finisher effect to Chrome's jab. Let's test it in Smash. And now if we try Side B, the projectile has one of Mithra's effects on it now. Of course, because of the path it follows, it looks quite weird, but this is just to show that it works. And then we can also try jab, and it'll have the proper effect. As usual, all this code will be available in item 1 of the description. I hope this helped, and happy modding!